the letter. So, on the second talk is on Thermolac in mangrove ecosystem by Professor Dr. Shaimogri Sar. Professor Dr. Shaimogri Sar is a professor of marine biology of NMLI University and well known teacher in marine biology and renowned marine molecologics in area and 33 years of teaching and research is the former dean in the Center of Advanced Study in Marine Biology. He has over 239 publications. He executed 22 research projects. He delivered over 100 invited lectures and he organized 16 seminars and symposia. He guided 14 research degree. He got certificate course on low country study in Ghent University, Belgium in 2000. And he visited Belgium, France, Germany, Netherlands, and Luxembourg. So, sir, please, sir, may I invite you kindly, please kindly give your lecture. Thank you so much, sir. Good morning. At the outset, I would like to thank Dr. Min for uh, the opportunity given to me. Hello, my dear and dear intellectual partners who are attending this webinar. Good morning once again. Actually, I have arranged my lecture in such a way so as to briefly give an introduction to the group MOLAS. When uh, their significance in the mangrove environment, then the biodiversity in Indian perspective as well as in uh, the major global mangroves, then the factors that are affecting the molluscan biodiversity in mangroves, and what are all uh, the conservative measures we can take. So, first, if you just uh, see the group mullers, they are uh, the second largest group of animals in the animal kingdom next to the phylum arthropoda. If you see the occurrence of the mullers on the earth, it dates back some 66 million years ago when the dinosaurs disappeared and the mammals started emerging. And uh, the relationship between the mangrove plants and then the mullers are very much coinciding with in the sense that on the appearance of the mangrove plants, the molluscan genera have also appeared along with that uh, with some endemic characteristic features to live successfully in this peculiar mangrove ecosystem. Further, if you see the mullers are the soft bodied animals protected by the calcareous shell of one or more pieces, and their ventral body wall has been altered as a foot, which is used to for their locomotion and also to bury them in the intertidal sandy and muddy environment in the case of the bivalve. And it has another peculiarity that is uh, like our. Uh, uh, teeth, the mollusks, they do have the radula, which is made out of the chitin material, and this radula is used for the collection of the food. Further, the mollusks in general are heterotrophic, and there are bivalves that are uh, filter feeding through their gills, their uh, food materials. And then there are other uh, classes of uh, the molars, which are actually the radula for the food collection, either through trapping or there are the modified radula in uh, three uh, families in the phylum mollusca, namely 
the pony day, turvy day, and turvy day that are having the harpoon shaped or modified radula, which are used as the water gun, so as to just paralyze their prey, which are passing aside. Further, the mollusks in general, they are, they are herbivorous, carnivorous, and they are very good decomposers also. So they are actually acting as an important link in the energy flow in the mangrove environment by carrying the organic matter to the level of secondary consumer. And as I already told you, there are uh, decomposers in good numbers in the mangrove environment. So they are ecologically playing a very important role by decomposing uh, litter and other leaves and organic matter in the mangrove environment. That is why if you see the primary consumers, particularly the filter feeders and also the detritus feeders are dominating in the mangrove mullet. Further, the protomids, which are nothing but the therapids, are used as the bioindicators of the ecological changes occurring in the mangrove. Beyond this, they are also being considered as the pollution indicators in the mangrove ecosystem, which are represented by the neritic mollusk, namely the Neripteron violaceum, and also the aerobic mollusk, such as Acidula and Melampus spacer. So, this is uh, the uh, relationship of uh, the uh, mollusk in the food web of uh, mangroves, they are uh, um, occupying a very important uh, uh, level in the food web of the mangroves by representing uh, by the film feeders and also the detritus feeders. And there are uh, different groups of mullahs which are uh, native to the mangrove ecosystem. Some mullahs are actually facultative and some are also migrant. Now, coming to the biodiversity, globally, the mollusks are enjoying their uh, diversity with 100,000 numbers, in which the gastropod mollusks are contributing 80 percentage. The remaining 20 percentage is being contributed by the other uh, molluscan animals belonging to the other six different classes of the phylum mollusca, which includes the bivalves. Aplacophorans, polyplacophorans, monoplacophorans, capophora, and then the cephalopods. And coming to the uh, biodiversity of mollusks in Indian context, there are 3,271 species of mollusks, out of which 215 species are considered as the mangrove species. Coming Coming to the distribution pattern and zonation of uh, the uh, animals, which are found distributed in the mangrove environment, the low tidal up to mid tidal level, that zone is predominantly occupied by the burrowers, namely the bivalves. And it, uh, this area is also being shared by the eupra, the crab, crustacean crab. Uh, they are living in the burrows. So we can see plenty of uh, the burrows of Yuka in this particular area. And when we move towards the, the high tech level, we can uh, see uh, the Nerita zone. The Neritids are occupying this particular zone and they are the peculiarity of moving along with the water in the sense that they will be occupying the edge of the water and when the water from the low tide is uh, raising up to high tide, it will be also moving up in the uh, mangrove roots, stems, and also the mangrove trees along with the water. And above this uh, particular uh, zone, we could able to see the periwinkles or the litterinates, so it is the litterina zone. So after the high tide zone, it is uh, the spraying zone or is a supra tidal zone that is uh, near the terrestrial uh, of its nature 
So this particular zone is being occupied by some prosobranch gastropods, particularly the Asimenia species and all. And if you see the massive uh, habitat that are being uh, enjoyed by the animals, we can uh, have the epifauna, uh, which, which are lying on the mud, and then the arboreal forms, which are actually climbing and then moving up and down in the mangrove roots, trees, and then uh, the stems. And the other group, important group, is uh, the infauna. They are actually living uh, in the substratum by burrowing themselves. Here is uh, a case study carried out uh, in uh, the major mangroves of India along uh, the uh, east coast of India has to describe the mangrove malacophonal diversity. So this is Pichavara mangroves, Muthubet mangroves in Tamil Nadu, and then Krishna mangroves in Andhra Pradesh, and Koringa mangroves in Andhra Pradesh again, and then Pitharganika mangroves in Orissa, and then Sundarbans mangroves in West Bengal, which is uh, the, uh, the largest mangroves uh, uh, in the globe, as we all know, which is being shared by Two countries, namely India and Bangladesh. So now, coming to the uh, final assemblage in Pichavara mangroves, uh, one species of infauna, two species of epifauna, and then uh, seven species of arboreal forms. Uh, this uh, slide gives you the idea about uh, the different fauna of uh, the mangroves. The same and then uh, the arboreal pulmonate forms in Pichauro. And then uh, from this slide onwards, some three, four slides are uh, giving you the uh, list of uh, the uh, mangrove uh, molluscan forms distributed in uh, the Indian mangroves. And then this slide uh, is uh, giving you the idea about uh, the animals in the field in various mangroves. And coming to the commonality of uh, the malacophonal uh, distributed in uh, the Indian mangroves, the five species, namely Serpidia singulata, Serpidia obtusa, Telescopium telescopium, Ritorina scabra, and Pythia plicata are enjoying their distribution irrespective of the location of the mangrove. And uh, coming to the global scenario, uh, the Australian mangrove uh, mollusks, you know, they are also represented by the potamates and also the elobates mainly. And uh, this slide gives you the information about the Papua New Guinea uh, mangrove ecosystem, which is also one of the uh, largest mangrove area uh, in the world. So uh, here is the assemblage of uh, the mangrove malacophona of uh, Pakistan. And uh, here, if you see, the Natiga didima is uh, one species which is quite famous for its migratory behavior. So it is actually the migrant to the mangrove ecosystem. It is not the native one in the sense that they are uh, found distributed in the Asian environment and they will be moving around and they are showing the migration this is the one and only group of uh, the animal in the mollusks that are showing the migratory behavior. Likewise, the Nodiluterina species and Pai species, they are of uh, the Rakishore uh, ones and uh, they are found distributed in the neritic influenced areas of the mangrove. And then this is uh, the mangrove uh, uh, associated malacophonal assemblage in uh, Cameroon. And then uh, again, uh, it continues. And in the ca Cameroon, Africa, approximately 34 species have been uh, reported, and all of them are belonging uh, to 17 different families. And uh, this is again Kenyan mangrove malacophonal distribution. So the Terebralia, you know, this is one of the important things. Uh, and then the Serithidia is uh, also ubiquitous in its uh, distribution in almost all the uh, global mangroves. And then uh, again in Kenya mangrove, the Litorina, uh, uh, that is the periwinkle, is another important group uh, which is um, uh, uh, distributed and enjoying uh, their uh, occurrence. And this is Secastria cuculata, this is commonly called the rock oyster or cup oyster, 
and it is actually uh, attached on to almost all the parts of uh, the mangrove uh, flora as uh, the foliage. And uh, uh, the, again, another important uh, species of uh, the viver found distributed in Indian mangrove is the isognomon epiphium. And then uh, the onchidium is the shellless foliage, and uh, the camouflage is its uh, uh, important and peculiar uh, character. And uh, this particular table uh, tells us about uh, the global distribution of the Moroccan diversity in the different mangrove ecosystems of various countries, namely Indonesia, Central Vietnam, Thailand, Myanmar, China, Pakistan, Iran, Cameroon, Brazilian mangroves, Venezuela, uh, Karachi, and also I mean, Pakistan again, and then the Hong Kong. In all these things, uh, the Brazilian mangroves are uh, having a very good biodiversity represented by 195 species of the mollusk, uh, which are uh, represented by 103 species of gastropods, 87 species of bivalves, 4 species of polyplocophorans, and 1 species of the caphopodans. And uh, now coming to the Indian biodiversity, uh, this uh, uh, table gives us complete information about uh, the uh, various major mangroves uh, uh, in India. Uh, the malacopodal biodiversity, uh, if you uh, see, the Andaman Nicobar Island uh, mangroves are uh, showing the highest biodiversity by, uh, uh, I mean, uh, recording 96 uh, species of uh, the mollusca, which is actually uh, uh, contributed by 66 uh, species of gastropods and 32 species of the bivalves. So if you just see uh, the uh, representation of the molluscan animals belonging to various classes, the only one class A plocophora and another one the, the small group, uh, I mean the class the monoplocophora and they are not represented by in the macro environment, but in uh, the mangrove environment, all the other uh, five different classes representatives of mollusks are uh, found distributed. So, the summing up for uh, the global biodiversity, the predominant molluscan families, uh, in the case of gastropods, that includes the Elobidae, Otamidae, then Teridididae, Litornididae, and Meritididae. And then coming to the bivalves, the Isognomidae, Veneridae, Astridae, and Polalidae are the predominant uh, uh, families. And coming to the last uh, group, that is Opistobranchs, the Anchidae, which is the shellless uh, uh, mollusk, and it will merge with uh, the mud as well as the rock. And uh, it is very difficult to just differentiate the Anchids uh, just uh, by its movement along with the mud, you could be able to locate uh, the Anchids. So, coming to the um, collection of mollusks, because for the study of any group of mullers, uh, one uh, the information which we are collecting in the field alone is not sufficient. So we have to uh, just uh, go for collecting, preserving them. And mere collection uh, of mullers won't give us uh, the complete idea about uh, describing the biodiversity. So the qualitative and quantitative data collection becomes imperative. So if we look into the different methods used for the qualitative and quantitative analysis of, I mean, estimation of uh, the uh, molars. Hand picking is the uh, important uh, uh, method in which uh, if any person uh, can be uh, deployed to collect the uh, molars in a particular unit time. And the quantum method is the next method, so which is of uh, different sizes and uh, with a uh, quad rate. We can collect the number of animals in a particular unit area. So it is very much useful in collecting the data pertaining to the heterotidal infauna and epifauna. And then the arboreal forms, uh, uh, particularly from the mangroves, we can uh, go for the estimation in a different way, in a more precise way, by uh, just dividing uh, the tree uh, with 25 centimeter uh, zones vertically and uh, thus we can uh, just uh, count the number of the animals to uh, understand the vertical distribution of the mangrove uh, malacophana. And transect method is another thing. There's in this, there were the epifaunal sampling is uh, done, uh, which are actually uh, found distributed on the mud banks of the river as well as in the mangrove forest. So 
100, uh, 10 to 100 meters of uh, the transects can be uh, uh, divided uh, right from the intertidal area up to the supratidal area covering the mangrove uh, flora and then we can just go for counting the animals. And then coming to the preservation, there are four principal methods of preservation for the analysis and also for the study of the malacophana in the lab. So the first and foremost important preservation uh, method is the anesthetization. So for this menthol or magnesium chloride or 70% alcohol or 1% chloral hydrate uh, could be used. And the second method is uh, the mere killing of the animal and then we can go for uh, the uh, study of uh, their internal organization and others. And uh, the third technique is fixation for which 4 to 10 percentage of glutal formalin or ethyl alcohol is used. So in the fixation, the cells of uh, the animals will be instantaneously killed and uh, so that there is no much morphological changes. So the uh, further study of uh, these animals uh, for their cellular organization uh, becomes meaningful. And the last uh, thing will be the permanent uh, preservation of, uh, in which 4% formalin or 90% alcohol is being used. And coming to the uh, conservation uh, and then uh, before seeing the factors affecting uh, the uh, biodiversity, why we should go for uh, the conservation? So if you look into the global rate of uh, the species loss or the extinction, it is 100 to 1000 times higher than it was prior to the evolution of the human species. So there is alarming increase in the extinction rate also. For example, in 1970s, uh, the extinction rate was one species per day. In 1990, uh, one species uh, in one hour. In 1992, for every 12 minutes, one species was lost. But presently, if you see the rate of uh, the extinction, it is one species per nine minutes. So because of uh, this alarming uh, the extinction rate, if you what are, which are uh, responsible for such extinction, uh, if you just see, the irrational and over exploitation of the malacophana from the mangrove environment is one of the topmost and important uh, factor. And then the human activity stress in the natural bed or as the habitat is another important thing which are said to be affecting uh, the uh, biodiversity of the mullets. And then the human exploding population is resulting the dumping of waste. Uh, we are, uh, uh, I mean, coming to the tune of several tons in the breeding grounds and also in the oyster beds. So which will be leading to the complete disappearance of the oyster beds. So which will ultimately lead to the complete extension in the future. Likewise, the habitat destruction for the reclamation activities like the dam construction, factories, highways, mining operations, etc., etc., are also responsible for the habitat, the loss of uh, the malacophana. And then the illegal trading and poaching of the particular species of the mullets uh, under danger is also leading to the extinction. Likewise, the natural calamities like the floods, cyclones, drought, or tsunamis are also becoming responsible for the complete removal of uh, the uh, malacophana from the mangroves through the uh, removal of uh, the mangrove uh, uh, trees and then uh, the uh, flora. And lastly, the introduction of alien species can lead to the habitat alteration, predation on the native species, and the disposal of the diseases from other areas to uh, the uh, mangrove environment, which will also lead to the complete uh, removal of uh, the malacophana from the habitat and thus lead to the extinction. So coming to the last aspect, the conservation strategy, so worldwide, if you see, there are the conservation, the conservation strategy is available only for less than 2% of the molluscan species. So if you just see uh, the strategies, the first thing uh, very important is the regulation of mesh ice while collecting uh, the, and then uh, uh, um, the molluscan animals from uh, the mangrove environment and also the adjacent environment, we must uh, uh, collect only the bigger size. And the strict vigilance should be um, uh, uh, had in exploitation of the undersized animals. And then 
we can issue the license for fishing of a certain group of uh, the um, uh, molluscan animals which are under danger and uh, uh, line shell uh, fishing rights could also be given only to limited uh, numbers and then imposing ban on fishing in the spawning season in the form of fishing holidays can be proposed and imposed and uh, 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 this could solve the problem and then educating uh, the fisher folk uh, about the need for the conservation is also very important and then uh, we must go for identifying the species under danger and we can uh, uh, produce uh, thousands and thousands of uh, the seeds that is uh, the spats of uh, these molars and then we can go for ranching so as to restore their natural population and lastly in order to carry out all these things always the resource survey must be carried out so we must intensify the resource survey of the malacoprona in the mangrove habitat and we can thus we can uh, identify the group of animals or other species of mullers under the threat then we can uh, take care of uh, those things uh, to restore their natural population so friends so let us have a vision to see vision to take up to save our mangroves and also their biodiversity so being the researcher and also the uh, common person be responsible in the field always return habitats to their original positions after turning them over the other organisms have the right to survive too so thank you thank you very much for uh, all of you for participating in this webinar and once again i hold